new faces and uh, what an experience this is. But before uh, we get into this main stage match, we are actually going to jump over to the B stream here shortly to check in with Team Envious and Tilted Towers. So Team Envious, obviously an all-star uh, all roster uh, and Tilted Towers fighting their way out of that open bracket. Yeah, and Tilted Towers, that is no team that you can overlook because the likes of these squads, the talent of these players is one of the best we have ever seen coming from an open bracket. And Shooter, originally on Splice the past few events uh, in 2017, and after that Splice uh, roster change, now he's teamed up with Falcated, Commonly, and Baby J. And we've seen a lot of big plays from Baby J throughout 2017, and he has just been battling, trying to make his way into the top as we watch him trying to get back into his base, play a little bit defensive here with these Rockets. Two Rockets in hand right now as his team is going down on that snipe side, so he's got to be weary right now. Yeah, and as you can see, this is one of our feature station matches that we are jumping into. Just over five minutes left to play. Of course, there is an overtime in here as well, and we are seeing Envy in the lead. But like we said, game number one, and on the likes of Tilted Tower, Rockets and Sniper Control currently. Yeah, let's see if Commonly is going to be able to pick up a kill or two here, but they are getting trapped in their base, and this is not what you want to see from Tilted Towers. Having Sniper and Rockets getting trapped back in before, time and time again, we've seen teams just collapse on a team that sits back too much, and they're able to get control of those power weapons and then make that opportunity for a flag run. But I think they're buying some room here to get out of the base. A two-for-one Rocket. Unfortunately, one of those guys was his own teammate there. Does get taken out, but that's three dead for both teams. Stay in and commonly last two players alive. Commonly with three bullets in the chamber here of that sniper rifle, just trying to stay alive and buy some time for his team to spawn up and push to that snipe side of the map. He's doing a great job at just kind of posting up right here, taking on some fire, but staying alive nonetheless. Spots a player over by that red elbow, but is not going to be able to get any connection. Shot after shot, not able to connect with anything here, but still alive. He's going to go down, but he'll take that sniper with him. Yeah, I liked him wasting that last shot there, just trying to keep it out of the hands of the enemy team. You know how dangerous some of these players are with these power weapons. But even with that rocket and sniper control, the interesting thing is Tilted Towers didn't even get past the halfway mark on the map here. It's been nonstop aggression coming out of the likes of Envy. Yeah, we're just seeing them get stuck in their base here on the Tilted Towers side. Let's see if they're going to be able to just sneak one player out. Sometimes that's the biggest thing you can make, or the biggest play that you can make is just sneak that one player around. Maybe even go for a flag pull to try and pull the attention from Team Envious away from your base just to turn around and then your teammates can start making that push to that 50 yard line. But Rockets are up. Looks like those are going into the hands of Pistola. We'll see if he's able to do anything on that other side of the map as we see Tilted Towers get some control. But Pistola, he is going to rotate around and bring these Rockets over towards this snipe side. And he spots a player on top of the pyramid. He'll finish off a player at the top of the lift and now he's going to opt to move across towards a very close quarter area and this is where you want to have the Rockets this is where they shot and what a great play Pistola not challenging the player hiding on top pyramid on sniper side because he knows just how hard of an angle and how much protection he has from the Rockets wisely backs down uses the rocket on maze and picks up two kills with them well just a little less than three minutes remaining right now sniper is gonna pop falcated with it in hand and now we're seeing more aggression from this Tilted Towers squad. Can they pick up a few kills here and make their push into that base? Hits the body shot, but he's going to go down, and that's two down for Tilted Towers. Make it three, and that push is completely shut down. Yeah, Envy just doing a great job. Without the weapon control, of course, we had, saw Pistola with those rockets grab two kills here, but that Sniper Falcate is not really able to do anything with it and gets dropped very quickly, so now we see it in the hands of Pistola, and we know just how dangerous he can be. Pistola in the perfect position here with that sniper able to get some eyes here all the way through that blue base but not going to be able to have a teammate stay alive goes for the no scope doesn't connect now just pulling the back here he does have a player up on that bridge who's dropped down but they're just trying to stick together here and use some tag team teamwork here to just 
buy some time, but Pistola's not going to be able to do it. No, runs into three different members of Tilted Towers, pushing up on the map. That opens up a quick double kill for Baby J. He finds that sniper rifle. Four shots left, only three in the chamber. We'll finally see if they'll be able to tie this one up. With only two minutes left to play in this one, they have to get another flag cap here. Well, that was a great push, I believe, uh, from Pistola to get behind Tilted Towers on that snipe side to allow his team to push in from the rocket side of the map giving them the rocket control. Sniper went down as well from Baby J, and now they're starting to make their descent over towards the snipe side of the map. Boo Boo Doo Boo fighting a 1v1. He gets back down, waiting for some help here as that player is going to push back to the sniper side. Helps out his teammate. Trippy picks up that kill. Boo Boo Doo Boo spots commonly. That's going to be two down. Perfect opportunity here to push up. There is a player hiding, though, here in the cave. Shooter Booboo Boo Boo Doo Boo 1v1, but Boo Boo is going to opt to back down. Ola goes down as well. If Boo Boo Doo Boo can get into this base here with these rockets, they may be able to use them to actually, he only has one rocket left now. Not going to be able to get a kill with either one of those. And their team still kind of seems a little bit all over the place, but there's less than a minute left. Tilted Towers has just got to get a flag moving right now. Yeah, and Boo Boo Doo Boo, some questionable rockets there towards the end, but still manages to grab his stick. I thought he was going to be able to thrust away in time, but looks like he hit his head on the ledge, gets taken out just under or just over 30 seconds left to play. You've got about another 10 to 15 seconds to pull this flag if you get it uh, in the fastest route possible, relaying it among your teammates, but that door is quickly closing. Shooters trying to make a play. He's got to win this 1v1 here. Bolt shot versus pistol. Bolt shot's going to win there. Boo boo doo boo. Holding down the base. 15 seconds left. Doesn't look like anyone's in position to get a flag pull. But on the other side, Team Envious is getting ready to close this out and finish the game with three flag caps. Five seconds left. That flag is up there. That's going to be it. Game number one going in favor of Team Envious. Yeah, once they got that last fl uh, flag pull with less than a minute left to play, I mean, between relaying the enemy team's flag and focusing on a return, there was just not much hope left. Yeah, I mean, Team Envious, you saw countless times them pushing in from rocket side, pushing in from snipe side, and over on the Tilted Tower side, you saw them crouching in corners a lot, hiding in their cave, peeking and putting some shots out. Sometimes you just got to be the guy to initiate that push. I'm pushing out, you're following me, and we are just getting the heck out of our base. Right, 10 minutes of aggression and trying to get into the base, focus on those perfect flag pulls were not working out for them. So that's when you like to try to take a higher or a bigger risk there. Have that player flank around, get a sneaky kill, for lack of a better word, and a flag pull there, trying to just disrupt the pace of Team Envious. But great overall job by Envy showing why they are sitting in pool play. Well, we're going to take a look at the D station here, usual suspects first Fyra Gaming and Fyra is up one to zero in this series. We're tuning in to Plaza on Slayer. Almost double the kills here from Fyra against usual suspects. We're gonna see if Fyra can close this out. A little bit slower gameplay here though, tuning in. Obviously Plaza can be a slow game type. Coliseum CTF is very fast, but uh, we're going to see if Fyrus still can continue their run here from what we saw previously in the event. And keep in mind, it's not over till it's over. We saw the likes of Renegade versus Optic Gaming yesterday have an insane series with a monstrous comeback here. But what we're taking a look at is with this usual suspect squad, keep in mind if you're unfamiliar with this team, this was not their full roster that they competed with online. They did have some travel issues and had to pick up at least two replacements here in this event. So they are doing with whatever they can with what they were given at this event. Without a doubt, and it's just great experience. Coming to your first event here, MLG Orlando, you're getting a lot of experience against top players, and that's going to carry on moving forward, going to your next event. You're going to be able to take that knowledge and use that to enhance whether uh, it's your teamwork, whether it's to enhance your communication or as maybe a specific uh, play on a certain map on how to break a setup. You may have that best, uh, best case scenario, but it's not going to be it's not going to be worth it unless you know how to break that setup and uh, so they're going to be able to watch optic gaming or watch some of the other top teams in person or even play against some of those top teams to find out what they exactly need to do, but uh, we're going to see Fyra take game number two going up 2-0 in that series. Yeah, and keep in mind, we're back on LAN again, so these players are getting great experience. You know, who knows how many local players they have in their area that they can even go and set up to, to get that kind of practice in. Yeah, and I remember back in the day when you and I were competing, uh, back in just our city. We were playing in a small town, 
thought we were the best went out to an mlg tournament got whooped and then that got us into it, it, it it lit the fire for us, and we well, just wanted to keep competing. Well, keep in mind the level of talent in our local area. Our first event, Mike, was not the MLG event. It was a local event where we ran into the likes of STK, which was the Ogres and things at the time, <laughs> the best players in literally the world. Well, let's get back into this match here. Team Envious versus Tilted Towers here on the main stage. We've got Pistola with Camo. He's waiting to make his move. Ops not to go into that window. Commonly does get spotted. Pistola playing it nice and slow here. Does not want to get seen. And look at that. He's going to put some shots on Commonly. Sane goes in to finish off the kill. And Pistola doing a phenomenal job at staying alive. He had all four players right here focused on him. And his team completely collapsed and completely took down absolutely everyone. It is seven to zero. Yeah, and you can't even, you know, stress the importance and wise decision making that we just saw from Pistola. First of all, the ability to stay alive in that situation the decision making to put a couple shots on commonly as his teammate flanked in through bubble like those were all very well thought out plays by Pistola. well we're seeing very something very familiar commonly was getting trapped back in this bubble again but it does look like baby j is going to be able to take down pistola and another player did go down from team envious uh, but now we're going to see falcated here over by blue bubble he's got teammates by red bubble as well trying to just push out of this carbine area and get into a base maybe get some pink control because team envious They've just had complete control of this map right now, but he's going to get caught off on his own. Yeah, great start here from Team Envy. It's 9-3 lead. The Pistola with the camo plays there, working wonders here for this squad to give them this early lead. And now you can see some of the collapses coming in here, trapping the likes of Tilted Tower over towards blue base. And now they're picking him up on split spawns, just keeping a numbers advantage this whole time. It almost looks like Tilted Towers is playing very scared right now. They're, they're not wanting to push out. They're sitting back. Nobody is just making that execution and actually now as I say that we're slowly starting to see them make that push towards pink side three players pushing out camos coming up you're seeing them get ready for it. that popped at 943 and it looks like that will be burned at 940 so that next camo will be up at seven minutes and 40 seconds but time and time again team envious it feels like every time we're on their screen they're top middle they're getting in positions where they're able to get shots across the map and easily help out their teammates yeah and keep in mind here tilted towers they have been playing against a lot of lower tiered teams right now so what they've been able to do all weekend long so far they're not going to be able to get away with against a squad like envy here all right now we're seeing some teamwork here from tilted towers making their push towards the pink side of the map you have a player over by pink two top middle and then commonly spots this player pink one nicely placed plasma but it doesn't finish him off gets even another shot but he'll have the likes of shooter help him finish off that kill Oh no, and Pistola, he even picked up a kill there on the shooter. That's just heartbreaking, especially down by seven kills. That no shields player, no health, no shields, no nothing. Able to stay alive long enough to pick up an additional kill. Well, let's see what Team Envious does here. They all spawned up over here in red too. Let's see how long they're... We're not seeing much pressure here from Tilted Towers. Team Envious is back in red, but no pressure from the Tilted Towers squad. We're seeing Team Envious push out right now and make this descent here now towards pink two. Yeah, and we'll try to keep you updated on here, but let's go take a look at the straight versus wise gaming. It's what we've been waiting for here on the main stage as this one is now underway. All right, well, Gilkey now going for camo. Not going to be able to get that, and that camo is just going to hang out down here. Nemesis spots it. It's going to queue up the ground pound. Doesn't need to as he just floats on down the map. Picks that camo up at 11.42. Now just trying to stay alive as no team has put a point on the board just yet. Yeah, and this is a great job. Nemesis puts a shot down, but wisely backs up. When you have that camo, besides using it effectively to grab kills and sneak up on players, you need to just stay alive to make sure the enemy team here, so Wise Gaming is just concerned about it, not playing as aggressive, constantly checking their back and keeping them off their game. Nebula with the railgun in hand, knows a player is back by Carbine. He's gonna opt to leave him there and try and help out here over by uh, the basement, see if he's able, or excuse me, not the basement, but the BR base. He's got two power weapons in hand, turns the corner, two players, surprised, not going to be able to do anything, and puts all the power weapons into the other team's hands. Ooh, that's one of the dangers of having all those weapons, Mike, is what looked like an easy double kill, not appearing on radar and seeing two players push down Snipe Hall, not able to grab a kill. Rami trying to block some spawns over here, but there is a player already back here. What a kill by Gilkey. 
Nice grenade. He's going to go down. But look at this. Destroyed falls off the map. You'll see in the kill feed there. So that's going to be not something you want to see here in the, this tight of a match. All right. Demon D grabs a great kill on Moose. So that was, I believe, the last railgun shot that he did have. And they end up trading BR base. So now map control is kind of flipped here, but still very close game. Wise Gaming by no means out of it. We also have a tweet coming in. Excited for a full day of competitive Halo with the best and most knowledgeable characters in the business here bravo walshy sims special thanks to mlg as well so mike i guess we just we're yeah, just not there I, I i guess we're not on that level we're b grade we're <laughs> b grade but nemesis see if he's going to be able to make some moves here flanking around as he's got some teammates fighting over by the basement getting some great sight lines a few shots on the players at br base he's not going to push in because he's got to stay alive he's only by himself but he can't get away he'll get caught on that corner camo's coming up hello scatter shot to the face and that camo is going to be burned at 940 next yeah. camo 740 and that's a great burn there considering straight rip and still with the controls still racking up some kills here keeping wise gaming from grabbing their footing putting any additional time here on the board and take a look at that pistol skin mike rocking straight rip in here i was gonna call this out i thought you were gonna call it out we saw some body disrespect there from destroy just meleeing the body that he just took that player out gotta love that body disrespect mike and wise gaming here finally looking like they might grab an opportunity to get some time two people go down very quickly nest control does flip now we have straight rip and focusing on br base now it looks like wise gaming will try to contest this or go ahead no looks like they just trade it for basement here so i do like this play coming out of wise gaming all right we're gonna see if straight ripping can counter though what are they gonna go for are they going for basement or are they going for nest Nice flank here from Demon D to throw them off balance and start capturing BR base as well. He does have his scatter in his back pocket. I did not see if there's any ammo left. We'll see if he's got any if he gets into a close encounter. But now they're able to control the entire map, holding the trip cap, trying to keep the players of Street Ripping on spawn. You see the players on Street Ripping going for basement as they're able to pick up two kills. Musa goes down though. That's going to be three down for Straight Ripping, but they are able to get that reset. Yeah, and you had Straight Ribbon playing so well for the first three minutes of this game here. But just like that, Wise Gaming with a triple cap. Total control on the map quickly gets right back into it. Nemesis in another spot we just saw moments ago. Able to pick up the double kill. It's going to be three down for Straight Ripping, two down for Wise. Wise still slowly gaining traction here. 44 to 34, not too far behind now. Yeah, and you see Destroyed had that railgun, did a great no-help jump out, picks up a kill. I believe that railgun did fall off the map, but finally, as Wise Gaming puts 36 additional points on the board for that total of 37 here, sure, and finally flips control again. All right, Gilkey was able to get the camo. Can he stay alive, though? Get some help from his teammate. He's trying to just get out of dodge right now. Is he able to get away? No, finally taken down, and that camo once again will be burned. The next camo is coming up at 537, 536. Uh, but now we're seeing straight ripping get some more control, holding two of the strongholds, BR base and Ness. But they're losing Ness quickly, if you'll see that on the right side of your screen. But they're able to finish off the player just in the nick of time. That second player finishing him off just in the nick of time as well. And they're able to get that reset. Yeah, that was a great reset. It was getting very close there. And you thought that flank from Wise Gaming was going to work out for them. But another, a better flank coming out of straight here picks him up from behind here and maintains control. Spots the player with scatter shot. Rami's not going to push up, even though that player was one shot. He's going to take it slow, play it smart. He's got three teammates or three players here to quickly capture basement. Yeah, and you see that's going to be a triple cap momentarily. Will they be able to contest the BR base? Looks like Wines Gaming has not even been able to get over there. They pick up a few additional kills. Now if they rotate over towards Carbine side of the map, they'll be able to hold this maybe to the end of the game. They just want to keep a numbers advantage. As you can see in that kill feed, Musa also with the scatter shot. Rami did spot a few players on his radar. Can't seem to locate him. Actually, he does now. Can he finish the kill? Nice shots by Rami to take down Gilkey. Trying to stay alive, and that player just soaring through the air there and Musa will come in to finish off 
K-L-T-N-I. Oh no, and look, they almost had Ness, but he gets taken out. I ex fully expect a reset to come here. They're focused on both strongholds right now, trying to get BR base, but Rami just flying around, not able to connect with that railgun. Will turn it over, but look at this, how close we are to this game ending. If they're not two people on that hill now, this one is over, and sure enough, that's all she wrote here. Straight Ripping takes a 1-0 lead in this series. And look at those clean, straight Ripping logos there. Just all four, got the white, got the blue, just the classic logo. How, how happy are you to see that logo? Oh, it's You're amazing. I mean, those skins are awesome. Stray Ripping, obviously a big part of a lot of our lives here and, you know, going back to the original MLG days and the Halo 2, or actually Halo CE, Halo 2, Halo 3 days with seeing those squads, the final boss, Stray Carbon, constantly competing for that number one spot here and now seeing some of the new class, new generation of players come over and take that role. Take a look at Musa. Players, other pro players have been saying he's the rock star of this squad and he is Definitely showing why. 14, 9, and 9. Putting up some big numbers for his team. Obviously, takes all four guys to win, but on top of that, he's laying down some big damage dealt alongside Destroyed. 1,900 from both of them. About 300 more than everybody else in that game. Yeah, I mean, Sherry Ripon just did an amazing job. They're playing exactly how they wanted to, rotating when they wanted to, contesting the strongholds uh, when they should really, and it showed throughout that game. Even though they had a 30-second lead off the start, we had Wise Gaming bring it back with a total control, triple cap here, but not able to maintain that long enough, and Sherry Ripon pulls ahead for game one. And you were talking about how Straight Ripon has touched many of our lives. I got to say, I at least played for Straight Ripon one time. I got, I got a few in. Uh, I got a few in with straight ribbon, so it's nice to kind of have that that stamp. Yeah, I mean, I, I almost joined Final Boss at one point too, but sure, been only one of the top three that I rocked. <laughs> All right, well, going into game number two here with straight ripping versus Wise Gaming, kicking things off with Nebula, but he's going to go down. Let's switch over to Destroyed as he picked up that fresh overshield. He's making his way over towards the car side. By himself, though, gonna flank around as he's got teammates over by Pink 2 as they are looking to collapse into Red 2. Musa is gonna go down underneath the base. Destroyed, finally able to spot some players. Gonna get his OS completely drained there, though. It does have a few two teammates that are able to pick up those kills. That's gonna be three down for Wise Game. Yeah, seven to two lead. It's definitely a hot start here for Stray Ripping as they still have full control. Plasma Pistol Man's and destroyed. They killed them all over towards red base, so you can automatically assume or already know here that the rest of Wise Gaming is gonna come off spawn over towards blue. So it looks like uh, we had him pushing maybe a little bit too aggressive there for destroyed, but nicely done by Nemesis. Cleans up some of those players here. Well, we're just seeing the aggression continue over here. Straight ripping constantly, going back from red base to blue base red base to blue base and they haven't let up yeah we're seeing a player maybe one or two players go down from straight ripping but the, the trade that they're getting they're losing two players and taking down four players in my book that's absolutely perfect hey that's a 50 to 25 win if you keep that going all game long so we'll see if they're able to maintain that kind of momentum here or we'll see wise gaming kind of start to diminish this lead Nemesis uh, hanging around here top middle. It's got a little bit quiet here. Now we're hearing some shots in the distance, but uh, I think from the wise gaming side, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, do you still think they're not playing aggressive enough? Are they, are they playing too passive and getting too defensive? Yeah, it kind of looks that way. They need to make sure they grab their footing before pushing up and, and getting that top middle control, but it's just too much aggression here coming out of Sheriff. And one of the best things on this map or why you see such big swings in those kill totals, uh, 16 to 8, four, or excuse me, 18 to 8 now, for example, here, is you're able to just rotate so quickly back and forth with, with uh, thrust and sprint here. You can constantly be collapsing. And the spawn points on this map, you, there's so many different lines of sight and ability to move quickly here that you can just maintain number advantage here and that is exactly how you win the game well we did see os go into the hands of wise gaming can they turn this game around here he's able to pick up a double kill but he's going to go down quite fast and not be able to put that os to too much use nebula with the plasma pistol at car side playing a bit passive here just waiting for this player to make a move but while he's been waiting it looks like he's getting shot from across the map maybe a player at top middle as well so he's been here quite some time i'd say about 15 or 20 seconds and now we're seeing uh, some more movement from that straight ripping squad players just able to completely get around him and just make a 
an incredible flank. Oh, and Grammy almost picking up an overkill there. Demon D does come out ahead in that last battle as the last player alive for Wise Gaming. But I think you're right, Mike. We saw him playing very passive. That 1v1 battle he fought before looking top center, 10 to 15 seconds long. You need to be collapsing here because what happened was uh, Stray Ribbon got the flank from Car side, won the battle over there towards Car Blue, and then he ended up himself getting collapsed on, even though he had better overall map positioning at the time. Musa with the plasma pistol trying to get some connection. This is the guy everyone has been talking about. Let's see what he's going to be able to do here. Pushing alongside his teammate. Gets him down to one shot. Takes down Gilkey. Goes for the double. Is not able to finish the kill. Does have a teammate to finish it up there, but able to get the connection with the plasma pistol. Over to the over to Dostroid. Excuse me there. But again, Rami making a push. Dostroid following right in behind him to be able to finish off that kill. Dostroid realizing. He was going to get caught out in the open, tried to make a, uh, an escape there, but he has got collapsed on and there was nowhere to run. Now, Wise Gaming, they are able to maintain the kind of the score differential here. So at least it's not Shay Rippin constantly building up more of a lead here. So this new overshield's coming up here. Looks like Wise Gaming is in perfect position to grab that. Not able to connect enough shots here. Gilkey will grab himself a full OS here at 740 or so. And although Wise Gaming was, has been able to get control of this overshield and the one previously, they're still down by six kills. I think they really need to put their efforts and their focus towards top middle and, and just collapsing on their uh, collapsing on the base. And we're actually seeing that now from Gilkey. He's putting on that pressure. He's getting his help from the players at top middle. They're finishing up kills. Gilkey is moving in. They are a wrecking ball right now going into this base as they finish off some more kills and bring that lead down to four. That was a great use of that overshield. Like we said, constantly down by eight most of this game, but Gilkey picks up three kills. Kills here over towards Red 2 and steals the Plasma Caster here from Wise Gaming, or excuse me, from Straight Ripping here. So still down by four, another minute before this next OS is gonna pop. Plasma Pistol in the hands of Straight Ripping. And Gilkey and the rest of the squad need to start pushing out. They do not want to get trapped here over in Red Base. Yeah, it didn't seem like they, they knew what they were doing right there. It actually seemed like Gilkey was unsure of what their team's plan was. And he turns to his right, sees three red X's on his screen. Not what you want to see. And they have now gone down by six, now seven uh, once again. Gilkey's still alive, but I'd love to see them get some control of top middle and make a push towards uh, the opposing base. We're seeing just straight ripping still continuously. How many times have we seen destroyed over by that red car, just laying down cover? fire as his team pushes in from top middle or from pink side it's whoever capitalizes when having control you generally see win the game so when the wise gaming had control he took that eight kill disadvantage or deficit and turned it down to four but as soon as that os was gone and gilkey had those three kills you need to immediately be rotating back to top center and cap, uh, focusing on the spawns again or else you see straight ripping gets to push out of the base for free talking about os that os is coming up here in just a second is wise gaming going to be able to get that for the third time in a row and will that be able to help them close out the game moose is actually able to pick it up and he gets the burn straight ripping up by four kills Gilkey top middle this is where you want to be to get some eyes but not able to get any type of shot off as he's quickly dropped 47 to 42 now wise gaming cannot let any mistakes happen here yeah, and we'll see two members nebula and klt and working together but the collapse from straight ripping once again a player up towards top car another one pushes down from shotgun here and and they grab these kills. Another player hiding no shields. This will be the 49th kill if they're able to collapse. Nemesis grabs himself a kill instead, which still gives them that 49 lead. But regret, this is a scary map to try to get seven for one here. And that will do it. Straight Rippin is able to pick up that 50th kill, taking game number two. Looking like this could be a clean sweep in the favor of Straight Rippin. That's definitely their focus right now, not to let any uh, losses here go over to Wise Gaming. We'll take a look at the stats momentarily and see kind of how, how this one played out and who's really been stepping up for these two teams. Wise Gaming by no means out of it quite yet. They've shown signs of life, moments of greatness here, but it was like we said, it was that level of aggression playing too passive. You need to be faster. You need to be collapsing on those spawns because yes, yeah, sometimes you might just trade kills back and forth with one team gets full control like you've seen it with the likes of optic they're gonna rack up 10 15 or more kills during that time and it's up to what you can do when you grab control to bounce back well taking a look at those stats you'll see a lot of assists from both sides but like you said it was just about 
committee pushing into that base instead of hanging back for too long taking a look at the damage dealt there over 2,000 from nemesis and dust droid big big numbers basically i would call them turrets on the map they were just sitting there turning everything making sure every player is weak yeah and you just saw it was just great teamwork and collapses the angles and the routes that they were taking you could constantly see you had members of wise gaming kind of sitting back waiting for help but the help just wasn't coming it was straight ripping that was getting those advantages and those flanks and those different angles here so just great overall overall job from straight showing a lot more life than i think we saw out of them yesterday and i remember back when i was competing having a player on your team that just deals a lot of damage it is so freaking nice i remember running around Around the map you've got ogre two ogre one getting people weak walshy getting people weak I've, i stumble into a guy he's already half shields that's a nice two shot cleanup maybe he's one shot a one shot cleanup it just makes things so much easier when you have people on your team just constantly shooting things you can never stress the importance of putting one shot onto somebody across the map because not only do you help your teammate win that battle but you got to think about what happens after that battle you're going to be fighting someone else and you will just have that much more shield and health going into the following battle to one get additional damage down or two just stay alive well, here we go with Demon D. He's got the camo, and Wise Gaming has got to win this right here to keep themselves alive. He will get that connection with the combo. That nade is not going to get him either, is he? Yep, he's going to be able to pick it up with that second one, and this is what I like to see out of Wise. They're moving that flag towards pink side. Demon D, he's watching the car spawns. Two players fall underneath the base, and Demon D's in the perfect position to just keep that pressure on as they're moving that flag over on the other side. Nebula puts flag number one in. 49 second cap here so why is gaming they know their backs are against the wall here they do not want to lose to straight ripping right now and we'll see if they're able to focus on this second cap because they have a numbers advantage once again flags already been pulled and that flag is sitting out front demon d just trying to stay alive just being a slain machine right now just in the faces of straight ripping taking down another kill that's a killing spree players are spawned over by car nades and shots coming in left and right demon d is going to go down that's two down for straight ripping though if a player from wise can drop down they get that flag moving they may be able to secure cap number two but look at the positioning from wise gaming they have a guy pink two car two in top center that's exactly what you want to see from your teammates as you're starting to push that flag across the map they do get it a little bit further but now straight ripping with the numbers advantage jumping on that return and unfortunately for wise gaming not able to put in a second cap yeah and actually i think towards the end right there they maybe have gotten a little bit overzealous and tried to force that flag cap resulting in a counter cap by straight ripping as rammy ground pounds in flag number one tying up the game one to one nemesis here at top car bubble getting some shots on and we're seeing straight ripping go for another flag now we're seeing some pressure here from straight a lot of kills two down for wise straight ripping locking and locating on that third player they know one player is left and alive can he get that flag out of the window what a play getting it out in front of the base now wise gaming they have an opportunity to potentially stop this flag now you got to make a decision here go right for the return or focus on the camo because oh it looks like demon d was able to get it but no pushes bottom center gets triple team that's not what you want to see there straight ripping however they've already got the flag top of the base and answer back after being down one to zero here in this flag game they get basically a double or oh two caps my in a gosh, Musa putting on the moves right there and definitely showing that other player that he's got what it takes. Look at Wise Gaming though, they are taking flag number two, pulling it out towards car side. Demon D once again laying down tons of shots, picks up the double. That's two down for straight ripping, and that third player and fourth player had their attention on Demon D. So you see how much distraction Demon D was making right there. Yeah, but destroyed, however, throws the flag out here for wise gay or, or throws wise gaming's flag out of the base so he's buying a lot of additional time staying alive trying to be a distraction here so the, basically what turned into big advantage for wise gaming is now a flag standoff Rami on the other side towards pink he's got that flag back all the way by his base and it looks like he's got a teammate to go for the return and that's gonna be it straight ripping three caps to one they are taken down wise as they move forward once again and keep in mind that first cap actually came out of wise gaming in the first 49 seconds of the game but they weren't able to keep up that momentum and straight ripping shows why they deserve to be in their position can't wait to take a look at the stats on this one as that was only a three minute and four 
47 second game, which means after that first fly capture in the next three minutes, Sherbin put a cap in every single one of them. I mean, I'm happy we turned in at that moment with Musa, just showing, and we've heard people constantly talking about him.